Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. This is uh, Friday, July the 6th. I'm Bill Allen sitting in for Winston. We've got a really good show lined up for you today with a of uh, a lot of the how-to's on what we're fishing with right now is kind of in place of the uh, Friday fishing report. Uh, I've got a very special guest coming on to help me with that. First, we want to look at the uh, weather brought to us by Haney. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing every day this time of year. You're looking at a high 87, 88, 50 percent chance of thunderstorms, mostly in the afternoon. Uh, Early, you've got an east-northeast wind that's going to move to uh, to the south over in the afternoon, so the storms are coming. Uh, we look at, take a look at the tides brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We've got a, a 7:50 a.m. high tide and a 9:45 p.m. low tide, not moving a whole lot, about six or eight inches, I think is what it is. Um, peak times. Uh, 8.40 a.m. to 10.15 a.m. and then 8 o'clock p.m. to 10 o'clock p.m. if you're going to be out fishing that late. But uh, let's take a look at the uh, river levels. Apalachicola has been falling all week. It's at five feet and it's going to continue kind of a slow fall. Uh, Choctahatchee at Carryville has had a sharp fall this week to five feet and is falling out through the weekend. So some good water moving there uh, going out. But, uh, let's take this break and we'll be right back with our special guest. Welcome back. I am joined uh, as usual by Mr. Greg Brudnicki, one of my oldest friends, our mayor and fisherman, my fishing partner on many occasions. Uh, Greg, we've had some over the last couple of three weeks, it's been hot, right? It's been very good. Been very good. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit this morning about uh, primarily how we're how we're fishing right now. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, either right after the falling or right after the uh, rise of tide. But uh, you know, Jeff, I don't know how you can. This is this is a trout pattern skitter walk. Uh, if you can get it close enough on that, but. Uh, if we're out early, it's top water. Yep. Top water. Uh, moving pretty good, uh, you know, till till the sun gets up or the wind starts blowing. But uh, we've had some nice blow ups, some good fish here, caught some good uh, some trout. But we're catching more redfish now than we are trout. Seems to be, and and I'm not sure why there seems to be more reds than than trout, but. Uh, if you get out there, it really depends on how much wind is blowing and you, how much grass is on top of the water because when there's a lot of grass, you know, try to stay away from, but you like to fish the tide line, but when you're trying to throw a top water, it gets on there and you're constantly having to pull that stuff off. But uh, um, what I've noticed most is we want moving water this time of year. Right? Absolutely because the water is so hot, if it's not moving and it's not oxygenated, the fish are lethargic, they don't eat, okay? You want the water to be moving and with that rising tide, you can fish closer to the, to the shore, have a better chance, it seems to me, to, to catch a little bit bigger fish. And uh, if it's not moving and it's so hot, they just, you know, they're, they're not aggressive. Yeah, absolutely true. You do need, and that's when you look at the peak times, that'll show you too. It's usually always, you know, right before or right after a peak, you know, a, a high or a low tide, you know, you give it an hour or so to change and it starts moving. But, you know, we'll stay out on the flats following the tide end if we go with, with where we can get up into marsh. Mm -hmm. And like you said, the top water is going to be dictated by how much grass, how much the wind starts blowing, but uh, you've also been extraordinarily effective with a suspended bait once the top water is, is over with or the conditions don't allow it anymore. Yeah, this is that uh, Paul Brown, one of them, 
and this one just happens to be one that I got a, about a seven pound red on and with the wind blowing one way, the fish pulling the other way, it ripped the... Uh, That's what it looked like to start right. with. <laughs> it ripped the hook. Now this was the hook that was in the fish and, it, and even though it pulled loose, well, the way it's constructed, you know, still landed the fish, but it will not be used again. <laughs> I, I just thought that it would be neat to bring it in there. And, and uh, what happens when you do have a lot of grass on top, and of course the grass is growing on the bottom now, you've got the window between the top and bottom where this suspended bait will go. Now, if you jig it hard enough and stop enough times to get a bite, and you stay in that window, it's very effective. People get frustrated with it because, oh, it's in the grass, I can't get it out of there. Oh, I've got, the, more, the harder you jig it in one place, you can shake that grass off a lot of times and still get that strike. So it's difficult, it takes a lot of time, you gotta chunk it a lot of times, yeah. but let me tell you, you can cover a lot of water without throwing a cast net. You know, <laughs> throwing live baits, every time that, that bait slaps the water, you stun it, okay? And you're not able to move as much throwing that live bait. But this thing, you know, you're gonna spend 10 bucks, but I'm gonna tell you, yeah. it's well worth it. They and deserve. you catch several, that thing's caught several. Oh things. my goodness, yes. There's teeth marks in here. <laughs> um, uh, they're great, just make sure you tie it on good. And it's a soft bait, obviously. It is. But, Feels uh, like a bait. Uh, effective. And no talk way. about, you, know, you you, you fish it better than I do, but you hit and let it sink a little bit. And talk about the pattern and how important it is to get that pause in there. Yeah, when you, you throw this and you let it hit, and it'll go down 12 to 15 inches. And depending how deep the water is, you let it settle, not too long, and then you start jigging it. And when you're, when you're moving it, you're barely turning the reel, okay? It's most of the movement is this way. And every time you jerk it, it will come up, okay? So you've got to stop and let it settle. And when it settles, <laughs> that's when you get, I get probably 70 or 80% of my yeah. strikes are on that settling. So keep your slack up, especially when it's windy, because you will get that strike and you want the slack taken up so that when you do get the strike, you can jerk mm. when he's jerking the other way and set the hook, and you don't have to set it hard. Red slam it. They they just kill they that bait. They set the hook themselves. The trout, you do not want to break their jaw. Just <laughs> set the hook, because this time of year, that trout's mouth is soft, even a big one, and you just need to, and these hooks are very sharp. All right, we're gonna take our first break, and we're gonna come back with some other techniques and also some of the Friday giveaways. Hey, welcome back. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. We got some more, some more tips coming up and equipment, but uh, more, before we do that, Greg, let's go ahead and do the uh, tarpon dock drawing for the week. So the first one, and if your name's not called, you can blame it on Greg. The first one's for the red snapper from Tarpon Dock Seafood. And the winner is? Carol Jean Keeling, K-E-E-L-I-N-G. All right, Carol Jean, you just won a red snapper. And by the way, Go to Tarpon Dock to pick these to pick these prizes up. They are not here in the studio, uh, and also uh, from Tarpon Dock, a twenty dollar gift certificate. Mm. Let me get that. Greg, give Brudnick. me a little, give a little, little credit from Gregory. Ralph Turner from Youngstown. All right, Ralph, good deal. Twenty bucks at uh, Tarpon Dock Seafood. So, like I said, go down there and uh, we'll let them we'll let them know you're coming and claim your prizes. If you fail to pick them up in 24 hours, I'll go get them. No, I'm just kidding you, but you gotta go get them. All right, so, so what, the way we've been patterning things, whether it's morning or afternoon, you know, we're fishing top water early. You know, once that's done, or the wind or the grass prevents it, we start using the suspending baits, but um, uh, I will go to, uh, you know, I call it bouncing a, either a jerk bait or a, uh, uh, a shrimp, in a couple of different ways that I, that I fish it, but uh, these hooks are, are weighted, these wide gaps, and with also the, uh, the keeper on the end of it. And when I'm fishing a gulp shrimp, a four inch gulp shrimp, I don't know if you can see that, Jeff. 
but uh, I these four inch golf shrimp and you know you get them in colors depending on the water that you're fishing but uh, the best way to do it in my opinion is take and cut the tail section off of the gulp and I think I've talked about this before and then take the uh, where the tail's been cut off put it into the keeper and then run the hook up through it sitting on top to make it weedless and what it does for you with the head sticking this way shrimp move backwards anyway right. but when you're throwing to try to get distance this thing is more aerodynamic if you do it the other way it's going to flip on you and all that kind of stuff so um, now I keep a, a a seven and a half foot or an eight foot rod depending with a, a medium heavy uh, rod with a uh, a fast tip because all I'm doing is is bouncing it you know kind of like Greg saying you're almost keeping it in the same place but bouncing it taking a little slack pop it up off the bottom mm -hmm. when you feel them pick it up and you know take up the slack and feel that pressure and then you can uh, you can put it on them that way um, this hook will do basically the same thing it's a little heavier it's like Captain Mike's and uh, you know it's it's aerodynamic as well but you know we showed you that that they sent us some fish bites the fight club and they sent some three inch shrimp that greg started rigging for his dad on a popping cork right instead of the gulp that we'd used in the past and i mean talk about it's been really effective very effective i mean it you know the gulp is effective that's effective but that particular lure uh, I think that fish bite has got maybe a little more scent to it or a little more, it's a little more appealing. Yeah. You have to be careful with it though because when you're out there and there's chauffeurs and there's other things that will come up and, and, and eat it because they think it's a piece of meat. So uh, you got to keep it moving but not moving too much but enough that you can keep the trash fish away. Very similar to a live bait. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But they're and good. Fish bites the same thing that we're pompano fishing with now. Right. Those strips. Yeah. But uh, yeah. this is a jerk bait that they made that I never used before last week when we fished. Uh, and it rigs, you know, basically like the old bass rig. You just screw it on there. Oops. Don't drop that. Get another one. Just screw it on there. <laughs> uh, bring this up to make it weedless. And when I put it on the other day, when we got actually up in the marsh, uh, Greg was switching between top water and the suspending bait, and he can fish it shallower than a lot of people can. I'm not just saying that because he's sitting there, but he does it all the time. When you start getting in a foot of water or less, it's tough, it's real frustrating, but it can be very effective. Uh, and then I switched to that, and the, the, the same thing, you know, making a long cast and bouncing that in, and I had some fish just absolutely attack it. And, you know, last, you know, you can fish one till you don't tie it correctly and it busts off, uh, but uh, very effective, very effective. So, uh, you caught a real big one one time, too. Yes. He did. Bill, yes. Bill caught a nice, really nice redfish, and uh, when he was taking it off, he, oh yeah, he caught himself. Here we go. Now usually it's me getting. I, I would now in too. these paws. But yeah. The other day, you Mr. are still in the lead, four to one. Yeah, now, Mr. Allen put that big hook. Yes. Which, show him the one that that I. I dropped I it, but it's okay. the big one. Okay, that's it. I could have. I could have found my that joint. other piece of it in the boat. I was going to bring it this morning to show it, but he rammed it in there and he had to push it through so that I could take the side cutters and cut it off. <laughs> and he was, and he, it was, he took way too much pleasure in doing it as well. But that's the other thing. It, it, we're never going to leave home without it, but no. you need to have some cutters in there. That's a big hook. And it was in this joint and the barb was in, and I mean, I've got a hole on this side and a hole on this side where I had to push it through, and these are those heavy duty double jointed or whatever cutters or two stage cutters, and Greg had to get it, but in my defense, this thing just attacked this bait close. 
I didn't have a great opportunity to set the hook. And I told Greg at, the, at that point, I said, I don't have him well. And he was running big fish all over the place. So I was trying to, to get him in as quick. And Greg did a tremendous job of, he'd run under the boat and I tried to pull him out. And Greg netted him. So he's holding the net and I've got, I set the rod down and I can see the bait all the way in the fish's mouth. Right. But the hook had actually popped out and was in the net. So when I went to, to pick it up, I grabbed the net and, you know, the fish was still really green. He starts jerking all over the place. I don't even know the hook is in the net. I think it's in his mouth. And I wound up with it stuck there and had to push it through. So, uh, so while I'm on the board, Greg's still leading four to one. So let's take this break and we'll come right back with the last segment. All right, welcome back. Um, uh, one more, but we got we got to do the Sand Hills Seafood Giveaway on Friday for the uh, seafood platter. And I'll tell you what, if you hadn't eaten up there, you need to go. They can, they know how to cook. That is a fabulous place to go eat. Yeah, Busy took place. My mom and dad up there. It was really good. Sand Hill Seafood Seafood Platter. All right, Carl Kozinski. All right. From Panama City. Carl, from Panama City, you are going to enjoy that, and we're going to let them know that you're coming. Um, we got a, a picture here to show you and then a, a couple of videos, but the picture is one that you're not going to see very often. I fished with Greg for many, many years, and on top water I've seen him catch uh, flounder, you know, trout and redfish, but flounder, uh, catfish and everything else, but the other day, you even caught something different from you, for you. First time ever. It was the first cast, and I thought, what in the world is this? And brought it in, and uh, Jeff will show you a picture. Um, hook in the mouth, and I wish, I was with my dad, so I wish I could have had my phone and taken a picture of it on the, on the lure, but uh, I didn't really get a picture of it until I got home, because I saved it. But, uh, Surprise. A mullet hooked a in mullet. the mouth with a top water plug. So yeah. Doesn't it's, happen very often. That yeah, was really very really versatile crazy. plug. I wouldn't recommend uh, trying to make a living doing that. No. Now we've got uh, you and your wife Lynn eased out the other afternoon late. Uh, just caught a caught a pretty day and you got a little video here that she took. This was at the end of Father's Day and um, we decided to go out. My dad and I had gone out. Uh, Saturday evening and so her and I decided to go out we didn't go out till about five o'clock and uh, we eased out and we were fishing the tide wasn't that great but when it's low kind of move away and find some deeper water just like the fish have to yeah and so we did find a little column of water over there that had a few uh, a few reds in it yeah that's yeah, good video Jeff uh, run that uh, run that a Greg
Good Lord, that's not smaller. Another Jim Dandy Reed. <laughs> One more waiting to be picked up. Twenty four. Hey, thanks. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, that was kind of a payback day because didn't you? Uh, you and Lynn went two or three days earlier and. She caught all the fish, right? She did. It was amazing. I mean, it was like she'd done it all the time, and I never fished. I couldn't get a bite. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I told her, I said, well, I, you know, I was the guide, so otherwise you wouldn't have caught anything. So I'm still trying to take care of it. Absolutely. Me. But uh, no, we. Uh, she. I think she caught a couple of redfish and a, and a, and a one really nice trout. Yeah. And uh, I didn't get a bite. But the next next time, I think I got about five or six that day. Pay it back. Put it on. Her. <laughs> um, you know, talking about that, it just late in the afternoon you had the opportunity to go out. And the other day when we fished was off a big, huge, full moon, but we had a very successful day. And, and the best time to fish, the peak time, is when you can go. That's true. You know? But early and get late. Get out now. on that water. When this water's hot, early and late. Yeah. You know, regardless of the tide. All right. Well, listen, thanks for joining us. I hope you uh, picked up some tips here that will help you fish. Have a great weekend, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.